other reason. These people are under our absolute control. Your job will be to use every man. Keep these scientists under absolute surveillance. In so far as possible to monitor everything they say and do. the uh, two bags here and uh, I'll take the briefcase. How did you get here so quick? Ready here. Move. <laughs> Dr. Werner? 
The general is waiting for you, sir. Now, doctor, we'll rush you through security. This way, sir. Sergeant Spag. <laughs> According to my calculus, 36 million miles should be equal to the ratio of 67 million miles. Yes, what is it? Dr. Werner has arrived and is going through security. Sir. Good. Tell him I'll meet him for the briefing as soon as possible. Uh, stay within a half hour. Well, that's the break. I was afraid we'd have to cancel just because one uh, confounded civilian was going to be late. If you please, sir, uh, I don't really see why we have to take him at all. McIntosh and I can photograph the back face of the moon without help. A lot of politics in these things, boy. If we hadn't played the science angle, we wouldn't have gotten the authorization, nor the money. This round-the-moon flight is a necessary step to the establishment of a lunar base. And you know how badly the country needs that base. Yes, sir. And I'm mighty pleased that you're to be the pilot. Now, I hated to bump you out of the honor of making the first orbital flight, Bill, but uh, I was just happy to be bright eyes. You know I well, that's years past and long done with, sir. Bright Eyes is a good pilot. I'd be the first to admit. You used to like Bright Eyes, right? <laughs> Thank you, sir. Uh, Captain Bright Eyes is a nice kid, but... Well, Colonel Bright Eyes is a little hard to swallow. Now, Lindbergh got promoted from Captain to Colonel Celeste. The president simply followed the established precedent. I suppose so, sir. Anyhow, this makes up for it. Being the first man to fly around the moon is all any pilot can ask for. Crash priority from the White House, sir. Oh. You know, I told the President I was so delighted at this opportunity of seeing you again. Now, about this movie fight. Well, uh, thank you, Miss Travels, but um, we're having a press conference in a few minutes. Oh, but Jen, I hope you want to see you. Miss Travels, policy. The President told policy. What? Oh, very well, Miss Travels. I'll give you 15 minutes here before the meeting in the brief. Will that do? Oh, just love it. But in the meantime, we're all set up for the press conference with TV broadcast, sir. Well, thanks, Charlie. Oh, will you take Miss Travels to Major Moore for a cup of coffee and bring them back here in about 20 minutes? I have a few classified matters to discuss with the press. Highly classified. Colonel, I'm sending Major Moore as your co pilot. Bill Moore. Oh, no, General, you can't. Satellite view, I might add, directly to the heroic first orbital flight by Colonel Brightheart, four years ago. Now that we have a space station, it is at last possible to send a ship from the station all the way around the moon. On this trip, Dr. Werner will photograph the back face of the moon. The ship will then return to the space station. Uh, I'm so glad a girl is going to do it, and so will all my readers be. But, General, what's the purpose of all this? Uh, what do you mean, Miss Travis? Well, my editor, oh, an old bear, nothing ever suits him. Well, he says this whole thing is a boondoggle, just another way of wasting tax money. Now, what am I to tell him? 
A fair question, Miss Travel. This round the moon flight is a necessary step before establishing a base on the moon. It's a, a survey flight. Maybe someday the statesmen will make military bases and military men unnecessary. If so, fine. But in the meantime, if there is going to be a base on the moon, and there will be, it's my business to see that it's in safe hands. Our own. Ma'am, the most important thing in the world to me is the military security of the United States. And I'm not in the least bit apologetic for my attitude. I wonder, General, could you tell me something about this wonderful space station? Yes. That would be very interesting, General. Well, I can give you a rough idea. The station is a titanium hull with steel bracing. 350 feet in diameter. It rotates completely around the Earth in a transpolar orbit about 10 times a day. And ships at block house frequencies operating? Incoming only, Colonel. Orders are to keep the channels clear until the Canada blast off. Canada to block house. Request permission to stop pumps. Permission granted. Canada to block house. Request permission to blast off. Permission granted. You are minus 10 seconds. Mark. Nine. Eight. Seven. Six. Five. Four. Three. Two. One. Fire. Mexico to Blockhouse. Request permission to start pump. Permission granted. Mexico to Blockhouse. Request permission to blast off. Blockhouse to Mexico. Clearance granted. You are minus 10 seconds. 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 5. Blockhouse, acceleration complete. Request ballistic check. Blockhouse to Mexico, tracking to flight plan. We will continue to observe you. Over. Mexico to Blockhouse, thank you. Over now. <laughs> Rocket ship Mexico to space control. Request instructions for contact. Space control to Mexico. Steady as you go. We will walk you to pocket three. to Mexico. Prepare to receive line. Go on the lock three. Bring them in.
What is controlling the ship now? As you can see by the lights in the tape control, the autopilot is keeping us on our computer track. With the ship in its proper attitude. Mm -hmm. Ordinarily, the rocket jets are controlled by the autopilot. But the pilot can always fire by hand. Now, if I were to throw this switch, I would override the automatic pilot and the jets would fire. So, but how would you guide it? Well, you don't exactly steer a rocket, since there's nothing out there to grab hold of. You must first turn it by the flywheel, and then it is held steady by the gyroscope while you fire the jet. Very interesting. Very interesting indeed. Thank you very much. Like this? I can't work now. The co-pilot board is there. Oh. Think nothing of it, Doctor. The Major doesn't like to... Pilot, I'll take care of him. Right now, move!
Well, you should be hearing the first report from the gentleman in about 40 seconds. He's paid to come around the Terminator at that time. Try priority from security, sir. Listen to this. A man representing himself as Dr. Werner has been identified as enemy team. Actual Dr. Werner found by FBI. Get on that space phone from Magellan immediately. You keep on it till you get it. ever since we went around behind the moon. I don't even know where we are. We probably landed out of sight of Earth. Might as well be on Neptune. Exactly 18 minutes, 14 seconds overdue. That agent must have done something. Why, they couldn't be even 40 seconds overdue if they were in their orbit. They've been interfered with them somewhere or another. Order a continuous radar surveillance of all their area in their emerging sector and keep an operator on that radio until we hear from them. Where are we located? Well, according to my calculations, about 125 miles past the crater Grimaldi, and approximately 11 miles from the furthest position from which we could beam a signal to the satellite station. Bill, could you possibly rig a relay for us on one of those mountain peaks in that direction? I don't know. Our oxygen tanks on our spacesuits only carry a four-hour supply. We have sufficient space, radio, and television put in the board, so it, it wouldn't be too difficult. If I could make it. But oh, Bill, you must. You must. Well, there's only one way I can do it. I'll have to go down and get Warner and take him with me. Warner, get up. We've landed on the moon. Since we're beyond radio reach of the Earth, I have to go out and set up a relay. And you're coming with me. Our lives depend upon us doing this quickly. I'll have to warn you. It's a gamble whether or not we'll ever make it. All right. I'm with you. I wouldn't have done this if I'd been forced into it. Let's go. And remember, one false move and you get this.
back here. You must. Magellan to space home. Magellan to space home. Come in, please. Can make it work? I'm afraid not, sir. I've been trying for five hours and nothing's happened. Could it be? Yeah. I hope that I make it to relay the time and support television. Press number three on the board. Okay, Pappy. Spill it. I'll give it to you and Bright Eye. Oh, sorry. No, uh, she's a pretty good kid when I get to know. Seems to me you used to be pretty sweet on her way back when. Well, that was before she got promoted. Tell me the truth, Bill. I gotta know. Could it be that you're still sweet on her? 
Tell me the truth, or don't answer at all. What could be? Bradley, what are you driving at? Now, now, don't get dirty. I don't like prying into your affairs any more than you like. But I've just been talking with the White House. The President thinks, and so do I. Well, put it this way. You're going to be shut up in that tin can with a pretty young woman for weeks, maybe months. Public opinion being what it is, it'd be a lot better for everyone. For the country, for the service, and for you, you two Americans. What? I can't give you an order on this, but uh, take it over. Listen, Pappy, she wouldn't have me on a sober plan. Are you sure? Maybe I haven't gone about it right. But, but you don't understand. She, uh, she has no use for me. Have you tried asking her? May I come up now? It's lonely down here. Oh, sure. I, I was just going to tell you that the general was true. What did he say? Uh, oh, oh, uh, nothing. Look, right, I... Yeah? I, uh, I was wondering if, uh, if you could, uh... Could what, Bill? <laughs> Did they send everything we need? Bright eyes, it's Christmas. Come in, please. Stay calm. The lunar base. I want to talk to General Green on a secure channel. Colonel Bright High speed. Yes, ma'am. Scramble code F, combo one. What is it, Bright Eyes? Any trouble? No, not a bit, Pappy. But you know, we've promised to do something. Yes. And a good thing, too. What about it? Well, if you expect me to go through with it, there's something you've got to do for me. Well, at this point, you can just about write your own ticket, if I can do it. What is it, kid? Well, it's this. Dearly beloved, we are gathered together here in the sight of God to join this man and this woman in the holy bonds of magic. Take this woman to be your lawfully wedded wife, to have to hold, to love, to cherish, and to extend in health until death do you part. I do. Take this man to be your lawfully wedded husband, to have and to hold, to love, honor, and obey, in sickness and in health, so death to you part. I do. Who give us this woman? I give this woman. Take her left hand, place the ring upon her face. By the power vested in me, I pronounce you man.